Today we're going to look at Magic the Gathering cards that are not even close to worth their mana cost. I'm going to start off with this wild card I didn't know existed until like a few seconds ago. Dick Cod... Dick O... Dick O... Tamancy? Whatever, something like that. Blue Blue 7 generic for a sorcery. Now, for each tapped non-land permanent target player controls, search that player's library for a card with the same name as that permanent and put it into play under your control. Then that player shuffles their library. This card is a fail on so many different levels. Now let's just start off with the fact that the most popular format in Magic the Gathering is Commander. So no matter what on earth you target with this thing, you will find absolutely nothing. Nothing in their deck whatsoever. I mean, I guess there's a, a world where they make a token of, so of something on the battlefield. You bounce or bounce the original back into their deck somehow and then target the token. But let's be serious, that's just nonsense world. Uh, it's, it's not even the untapped cards. They have to be tapped non-land permanents, which is like far more narrow, not to mention that it's got suspend three. So for all that combined, I mean, this is a incredibly sad card. Oh, we have no music. Hold on. We're going to fix that in a second. All right. The music is back. I'm gonna make, make my sound effect again. This is a very in super, su insanely super sad card. It reduces the price of all cards on today's show. That yeah, that's value. <laughs> all right, next up, let's take a look at uh, Henrik Scorn. Oh, it's the scornful egotist. Everyone knows what this card is. Okay, it's an eight mana one one. All right, it's an eight mana one one. That's all we need to know about it. Uh, now next up we've got Toads, Colossus of Sardia. Colossus. We've got here a 9 mana, 9-9 nine, nine trampling golem. Not too bad off the start, but it doesn't untap during your untap step. And then 9 mana, untap Colossus of Sardia. Activate this ability only during your upkeep. Good god. So I basically... I play this card out. I do get to attack at least once with it, and then I have the decision, okay, I hope I'm not gonna draw anything good for the turn because I'm gonna basically tap myself out to untap this thing again. Buried under a thin layer of dirt, it was known for centuries as Mount Sardia. Should've just stayed a mountain. Mount Sardia it is. Snuff out, that card is insane. It's absolutely insane. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buzzer that one thing. According to the legend, it costs three and one bl one black. Usually, it costs nothing. Uh, Christopher B with the Zodiac Dragon. What these? Uh, what's it called? It's from Portal Three Kingdoms. Nine mana for it. Eight eight. When Zodiac Dragon is put into your graveyard from play, you may return it to your hand. Oh, it's like a Rancor type card. It's but it's basically a nine mana vanilla creature that doesn't do anything else. That is absolutely not worth it. Not worth the mana cost whatsoever. Unless you desperately, desperately need to get around your opponent's removal. Which I don't even know if that will matter because at nine, at uh, turn nine, you're probably dead anyway. Platonic Liquid, thank you very much for your super chat. Megamorph. Just Megamorph. Is that like a card? Mega Mega Morph on on what? That is a, that's a mechanic. That's not even a card. Uh, Mega, what is a card with Mega Morph? The something Den, something Den is a Mega Morph card. I remember from the pits of my brain. Ancient Den? No, it's something. Can we get a Mega Morph card over here? Oh, here we go. Den, the Den Protector. It's got Megamorph for two mana. You may cast this card face down as a 2-2 two, two creature for three mana. Turn it face up for its Megamorph cost and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. But usually you get like some ability out of this thing. Also, I have to sort of buzzer this. I don't, this is not really. Oh, you see what you're trying to say? The Megamorph cost is not worth the mana cost? Or, do, or is it like it's pointless? Like most of these things cost three mana. The Megamorph is just like regular morph anyway. I don't, I don't understand the idea. But I'll wait to... Den Protector is actually kind of... <laughs> so I picked... 
I picked the best of the Megamorphs. I mean, this is the one that came up into my mind because this is the only Megamorph worth remembering. All the other Megamorphs are completely worthless crap. Okay, it's point, maybe point taken. I actually accidentally picked out the best Megamorph in the game. Uh, okay, and next up, Jay Thompson with Break Open. Not super expensive, but not worth zero mana. Are you serious? Okay, we have a two mana instant turn target, face down creature, and opponent controls face up. Wow, what a surprise. You know what? We could do that at instant speed. We could f turn face up the den protector. Even though, <laughs> that'd be so weird. All I need is green mana, and I can do it for two mana. But you and I could do it for two mana here as well. Surprise! It's gonna be a hell of a surprise when we get when they see it. Oh, a hero with the Lotus Guardian. Is this the expense of uh, Birds of Paradise? Seven mana, four, four flying. To add one mana of any color to your mana pool. That's right. So you can curve right into your nine mana spell. Seven mana. Next turn, play a land for eight. Tap your Lotus Guardian. And you can play... You know what you can play? You can play the Colossus of Sardia. That's right. That's what we can do. Lotus Guardian into the Colossus of Sardia. The, de the, deck, play the deck designs itself. Okay, next up, we've got a super chat from Steve Cooper. Thank you very much for your super chat. Uh, Epicure of Blood! Overcosted Veto. Uh, also, donate three to chat. You you got it, Steve Cooper. All right, we have a five mana, four, four. When you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Is it really that bad? I think Veto is actually a very cheap version of Epicure of Blood. If I were to look at it that way. Five mana is really not that expensive. Whenever you gain life, you trip That's like a comp combo card for five mana. Who's saying this exp You know, uh, what's it called? Kiki Jiki has been played in a lot of combo decks. And he's five mana. Okay, next up, let's take a look at the... Okay, so our first donated super chat will go to Erland. Uh, right of the Serpent. It's six mana for a sorcery. Destroy target creature. If that creature had a plus one, plus one counter on it, create a one, one green snake creature token. This is god awful. Is this a changed card? Hold on, this is the original. Destroy target creature. If that creature had a counter on it, put a plus, or a plus one, plus one counter on it. Put a one, one green snake creature token onto the battlefield. That's a sad panda card. It's not even at instant speed for a removal spell. And all I get is a dinky 1-1 one, one for spending in a million extra mana. It's completely terrible. Okay, Platonic Lick, we're gonna defend her Megamorphs. Most of the Megamorphs have high, higher base cost to accommodate from the Megamorph ability. Yet Megamorph costs more than the base cost. Silumgar Spell Eater, for example. Okay, let's look at Silumgar. Whoops. Silumgar Spell Eater. Okay, we have... Oh, yeah, the Megamorph. You may cast this card down as a 2-2 creature for 3 mana. It could... Could it be anything? It might not be anything, because I don't think all the Megamorphs are the same. You'll, you'll just know, like, okay, the, I played this thing for 5 mana. It's probably Silmgar Spell Eater. Uh, turn it face up any time for its Megamorph cost. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. You always play it down for 3 mana. You turn it up for 5 mana. But you'll know the moment they tap 5 mana what's coming. When it's turned face up, counter target spell, unless uh, its controller pays three. Definitely not worth You're basically, what, putting eight mana into a counter spell? But that's how you get the ability. Otherwise, you have a vanilla creature. That was the gimmick. And no, and no one, and no one even liked the name Megamorph. Oh, it's Morph. But it's, it's, it's better. It's the Megamorph. All right, then the uh, second super chat donated to W with the scaled worm. Scaled worm, eight mana, seven six. Yeah, that is crap. Okay, moving on. We're gonna have. I have no commentary for this. When was it printed? Oh, the Ice Age. Why would they even reprint this thing? Had a better picture back then too. Henrik with Zou Yu, or sorry, Joe Yu. Chief Commander. We have a 7 mana 8-8. Eight, eight. It can't attack unless your opponent has an island in play. Wow. Imagine spending 7 mana for an 8-8 eight, eight that can only block. Does anyone have an island? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, where's my spreading seas? Where's my seas claim? 
I need to make an island around here. Someone donate this person an island. I can't attack! And then we'll go also to Hastat with Aladdin's Lamp. Everything was expensive in, uh, what's it called, Arabian Nights. Well, maybe not everything. But Aladdin's Lamp was 10 mana artifact, pay X, tap. Instead of drawing a card from the top of your library, draw X cards. But choose only one of, choose only one to put into your hand. Shuffle the leftover cards and put them at the bottom of your library. X cannot be zero. So you, wasn't this like a super ponder or something like that? I mean, if you could tinker this into play, I wouldn't complain. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, this is... It's... The, the effect's not bad, but for 10 mana... No! no. God, please, no. I don't even know if we would play it at 6 mana, but 5 mana? At what point is Aladdin's Lamp actually playable? Maybe 5 mana is where it, like, gets, like, okay. And it wouldn't be th terribly garbage. I mean, the eff I'd be like, hey, I'm not wrong. The, the effect is great. Who doesn't like drawing cards from the top of their library X down and putting the rest onto the bottom? It's just a super ponder. Does it specify defending opponent or just any opponent? Huh? Oh, uh, was that in reference to a last card? You can't attack unless your opponent has an island in play. Can't attack unless defend. No, it has to be defending player. Good call, good call. Oracle text says defending player must control, control an island. They added it for Commander. Okay, next up, let's take a look at your friendly neighborhood. Idiot! Uh, Spectre of Mortality. Spectre of Mortality! Uh, five mana, three, three Spectre with flying. Enters the battlefield, you may exile one or more creature cards from your graveyard. When you do, each other creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. Where, e where X is the number of cards exiled this way. Okay, it's got it's five mana, it's got flying, it's a three three, it's got an ETB, but you may exile one or more creature cards from your graveyard. But if I don't, when you do, each other creature gets minus X minus X, where X is the number of cards. I need to exile a lot of cards, so effectively it's just like a five mana three three flyer. Very underwhelming. Includes your own creatures, yeah. You got to eat up your own. Well, of course, it's gonna. It's like a massacre girl, right? This is an overcosted, harder to pull off massacre girl. Of course, it'd be like that. Uh, here we go. Everyone's got to say Draco at least once. Hinario will be the first person to point out Draco. Even the cheapest you can make that. If this card was even six mana, I still think it doesn't see play. So it's like a 16 mana card that gets two less for each basic land type as flying. During your upkeep, you must sacrifice Draco unless you pay 10. But the cost is reduced by two for each basic land type among lands you control. Now is Draco's time! We got fetch lands, we got dual lands, we got tri lands, the triomes. This card sees no play in Legacy. Nothing. Nada. Zip. Draco, you were born garbage, uh, and you will be laid to waste in garbage. Should be zero at that point. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exact. Well, no, 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 Erland. It should not be zero at that point. Have you ever heard of the other Draco? Well, where is it? Sign of Draco. There, sign of Draco. Imagine this call costs zero mana. It'd be broken. Okay, so th it's got to cost a little something. Even at two mana, it's a little pushed. It's pushing us around in modern right now. Okay, this was Draco. This was Draco the sequel. And they did make it pretty cheap, but at six mana, it's still trash. Draco 2, Draco Strikes Back. Uh, okay, next, uh, ooh, Corbinix, the Ley Line of Life Force. <laughs> so, what you're telling me is, even if we can get this play, this in play for free, it's not worth it. Uh, creature spells can't be countered. Maybe to some player. You know, I, I'll admit that this is not worth it at all. Because, like, these days, everything has flash. Everything can be uncounterable. You can build a whole deck full of uncounterable creatures. It's a lot of creatures these days, like, it already says that it can't be countered. Counter spells, the value of it's going down, crashing. The stock in counter spells is, uh, it's not coming back. Uh, we need a new counter spell where we're just exiling things from the stack, not countering things anymore. Uh, so for that reason, I would never pay four mana for this. I don't really think I would even want to put it in my deck in the first place. In the first place, it's an 11-11. But I still vote Polar Kraken. You know what? I would too. Polar Kraken. 
All these Krakens. It's so weird. 11 mana for an 11-11 with Trample. Comes to play tapped. Can't, can't even block the turn it comes into play. And a cumulative upkeep, you have to sacrifice a land. Hopefully they're dead by then. Do you know what? It is better. I'll give it this. It's better than the Leviathan. Like, Leviathan, you have to, like, sack two islands every turn. Frankly, I think you're going to run out of islands faster than you run out of uh, lands with the Polar Kraken. That actually is not true. Two islands a turn. I mean, unless you don't have that many islands available to you. This will actually run away with the game. You have to sack one, then two, then three, then four. It's disgusting. <laughs> That's not even good in a Zedru deck. Boulder, thank you very much for your super chat. The Eater of Days. I can't remember. I, can't, I think my brother said this card was great. Okay, so we have a 4-mana 9-8 Leviathan with Flying and Trample. When Eater of Days comes into play, you skip your next two turns. Good luck, buddy! So, uh, here's the $1 million question to everyone. If I play Eater of Days on turn 4, will I live to see turn 6? Will I live to see turn 6? Probably not. I'm at, yeah, so like you, what is the point? Oh yeah, the point is you just have this giant flying trampling creature for four mana. That's it. That's the whole point of this thing. I mean, well, okay. There is some, if you can play on your opponent's turns, I guess it's fine. Is that like the key? You got to play this with a seed born muse and then just un keep untapping your lands on your opponent's turn. Look, would that work? Have I cracked the Eater of Days? You just lose two draw steps, that's all. It's only two draw steps if you have uh, uh, Seedborn Muse in play. I got that one right. That's the one that untaps lands every other player's turn. Four copies of Eater of Days. Four copies of Knowledge Pool Set. <laughs> Stonks. Yeah, everyone, everyone can enjoy my Eater of Days. Okay, next up. Um, David Sampson with Marakosk of Keld. Mara... Maroxus of Keld. Who is this? This looks like a professional wrestler. It is... And in this corner, the Maroxus of Keld. All right, we have a six mana star star legend. See? It's a wrestler. They are legendary. They're on posters and everything. Buy them on pay-per-view. Maroxus of Keld has power and toughness, each equal to the total number of untapped artifacts creatures and lands you control so if i attack with my creatures it's going to get smaller see it gets more powerful when it has an audience i knew it this is a professional wrestler Virginka says you know my suggestion has to be blind creeper i have no idea is there such a thing well it is a blind creeper is it actually, is it is it any more creeper if you know that they are blind? They can't even see you. They can't even peep on you. Two mana, three, three. Whenever a player plays a spell, blind creeper gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That's fine. This card costs two mana, but I'm 100% in agreement. This isn't even worth the two mana. You literally need to be up against a deck that only plays lands for this even to be remotely good. The hot deck has to be 100% lands, and it needs to not be broken. Because if they are playing 100% lands, probably you're dead in another way anyway. Good morning, MTG Gaming Bob. Ulick with Viridian Scout. Viridian Scout. This is a 4 mana 1 2 Elf Warrior. This is an elf? I thought it was a frog. Okay, we have a 3 mana. Uh, sorry, 3 mana Sacrifice Our Scout. Deals 2 damage to our creature with flying. This is quite pathetic. They know. Uh, Hover Guard's only blind spot is directly above it. This is for people who are really desperately looking for a random one of for their elf deck. Or their warrior deck. Yeah, seven mana to ping two. Ping two to flying creatures. Not any creature. Oh no, this Raghavan. If only it could fly. <laughs> then I could kill it on the spot. But I can't. Larry Law with the Wormskin Forger. A lot of worms on this uh, show. Okay, we have a seven mana. T seven mana for a two-two creature. Why are you so expensive? 
Uh, the forger comes into play. Distribute three plus one count plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures. This is also stone cold trash. It takes three weeks for a for a patrol of hunters to down a slagworm. It takes just as long to make a single cut in its hide. Yeah, that's really good. That's great. Crowcore Games, thank you very much for your super chats. Assuming you pay the seven blitz automaton is terrible. Okay, so if we play, oh, if you want it, if you don't go for the prototype thing, we got a seven mana six four haste creature. It's gonna come. It's gonna come in fast. It's gonna come in hot. <laughs> I pay seven mana. Get ready for my blitz automaton. Well, Urza's machine favored defense. Mishra built his to end the war quickly. Well, what part of quick is seven mana? I take it back. He, the, uh, Mishra is the person with the damn factory. Blitz Automaton will be in play by like turn two, probably. Turn one, Mishra's fact. No, is it N workshop? Turn one, Mishra's workshop. Soul Ring. Turn two, Blitz Automaton. Go. So in Mishra's world, this thing's cheap. In our world, this thing is complete sad garbage. Okay, next up, we've got. Uh... Part water? Is that an actual card? It is. Okay, it's an XX card. Blue XX sorcery. X target creatures gain island walk until end of turn. Oh god. No, god, please. So what, no. for like five mana I could make my creatures unblockable versus only the decks with islands? Which by the way, usually don't have creatures. If you're on the blue side, you might be heavier on the control combo side of things. I mean, not not all decks, but you know, like in general, blue is not really a creature-heavy type of uh, archetype. It's not the color of the creatures being out there attacking on offense and defense. Yeah, this card's terrible. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Exodus 1422. Thank you very much, John, for your super chat. Meandering town. Oh, town shell. This is the big turtle, right? Is it tower shell? Yeah, this is it. The useless part card, uh, useless part PRT card of mine. You mean Pro Tour? Don't know what PRT is. Five mana for a five nine with island walk, but there's a catch. Whenever it attacks, you have to exile it. Return to the battlefield under your control, tapped and attacking at the beginning of the declare attacker step on your next turn. Wow, that is a very, very slow card. It's like it attacks and and the punch is coming. Yeah, it's coming, but next turn. And then eventually, when it swings and gets there, the slowest punch of all time from the meandering tower, tower shell. Somehow it disappears in, in its attack as well. Uh, let's take one from someone to foresee, uh, Infernal Harvest. Does it count? Well, you tell me. Is it worth the mana cost? Okay, so that's two mana, uh, sorcery. Return X swamps you control to owner's hand. Infernal Harvest deals X damage divide any way you choose among any number of target creatures. How does this work? So you have to, I'm assuming it's your swamps? As an additional cost to cast this spell, return X swamps you control. Aha, I see. Oh yeah, and it said down there as well. You have to return X swamps. So you bounce your swamps to deal damage? Oh, this is terrible. Absolutely awful. Forget this card. So I mean, this, most of the, you know, most of these drain life types of cards, you can just pay X to deal X damage. I have to return my swamps back to my hand. And how much damage? Deals X damage by any way you choose among a number of target creatures. I can't even hit the player. It's inflexible and overexpensive. Two mana? Forget it. It's not even worth it. At zero mana, I wouldn't even play this card. Even at zero, well, maybe at zero mana. Okay, I, I shouldn't go that far. Von Ragnar says, at least it's not as bad as the sweep cards from Kamigawa. Do tell us more, Von Ragnar. Tell us more. Okay, Bryce with the Axelrod Gunnarsson. 
We got for 8 mana a 5 5 trampling giant. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Axelrod Gunners in this turn is put into a graveyard, you may gain 1 life and Axelrod deals 1 damage to target player. It's not, you know, not a bad ability. Am I paying 8 mana for this thing? Absolutely not. Never happened. It would never happen. <laughs> How do you find room for this thing? Whenever a creature dealt damage by. It has to be dealt. No, I do I take it back. It has to be directly dealt damage by the Axelrod Gunnerson. It's the only way it's going to ever take damage. All right. Platonic Liquid. We said lay. If we set a ley line, then we have to include. Untidake. The Cloud Keeper could also go Sora's Path, but you can actually make that good. All right, Untie Dake, this Cloud Keeper. It's a legendary land. Comes with play tapped. You can also pay two life. Add two mana to your mana pool. Spend this mana. Only play a legendary spell. Isn't that card insane? Huh? This doesn't even have a mana cost. It literally has a mana cost of zero. I could be wrong, but isn't this, isn't this like a Soul Ring? It has no CMC. But is it worth it? I still think it's worth it. This is literally Soul Ring for legendary spells and cards. Lands have a mana cost. Yeah, dude, they do. Have, they do have everything has a CMC of zero. <laughs> what was the math I hear? No mana equals infinite mana. Yeah, so this card makes infinite mana for the amount of mana that you spend to uh, play this thing. But um. I don't know. I think this card's worth it. Is this card see no play? It's like a $5 card. It's Soul Ring for legendary creatures. I think this card is good. I think the card is big, better than given credit for. I'm going to donate your super chat, Platonic Liquid. We'll give it to Charlie. The Charlie Debt Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter. Two man instant counter target creature spell. Uh, I think this is like accurately. I mean, okay, if you want to count all the counter spells in the game, this sort of sucks because it's not as good as counter spell or mana drain. It's like okay. I think it's like I think it's like in the okay realm of being good. It's not good. It's not bad. I'm not gonna say like oh, essence scatter is supreme garbage. In standard, it's pretty good. It's like it's like in the fine territory. I would not say, oh yeah, that's straight trash. Throw it in the garbage right now. Okay, well, let's donate the super chat again. We'll move it to uh, David Groves with Precision Bolt. Boop. Precision Bolt for three mana deals three damage to any target. Now that's what I'm talking about. It's like it's literally a slower, more expensive lightning bolt, and there's no way around it. It is just plain bad. Strictly worse version of Lightning Bolt in every single way possible. <laughs> what if we made Lightning Bolt, but it costs two mana more and only at sorcery speed? Say no more. Precision Bolt. It's not even more. It's actually less precise than Lightning Bolt because it can't even hit things at instant speed. <laughs> As a burn play, know your place, trash. Okay, Crocor Games, thank you very much for your super chat. Uh, Diabolic Machine, insert Titanic Flute here. Diabol... Let's see what you're talking about, Crocor Games. We got a 7 mana 4-4 four, four construct, pay 3, regenerates a Diabolic Machine. You know what, I'm with you here. We literally just paid 7 mana for a 4-4, four, four. that's it. We didn't even get anything out of it. Oh yeah, sure, we could regenerate the creature. I feel like there's better cards that we can regenerate in this case. Was, was this like the only generic creature that you could regenerate at the time? Came from the dark. I think like Masticore would come out later in Urza's Destiny or something like that. Uh, that was like an artifact creature that could regenerate. Uh, I don't know. But it's colorless. It can go in any deck. Yeah, it could. It could go in, in any deck, or I could refuse not to play this in my deck. Okay, next up, we will go with Restian Serpentine with actual Leviathan. Leviathan. Boom! Uh, what is this, 9 mana for a 10-10? With Trample, you say? Sounds good at first, but it comes into play tapped. 
In fact, it doesn't even untap usually uh, at the beginning of your upkeep. You have to sacrifice two islands. And if you do, you must un... That's the only way you can untap your Leviathan. And it can't attack... It also can't attack unless you sacrifice... I forgot about that thing. Oh my god. No! So we have to sack two islands to untap it. We have to sack another two islands to attack with it. I hope we kill our opponent in two shots because we're gonna we would have spent eight total lands to get that far. And then uh probably you only have to chump block this with like a one-one creature. Then only deals 19 damage to you. So easy to undermine the entire Leviathan. It's a classic. It's a classic thing we can keep making fun of even by today's standards. All right, let's get to our sponsored segment. We all love our sponsored segments around here. FusionGamingOnline.com, the new Commander decks, the Fallout Commander decks. Pick them up while they're hot at Fusion Gaming Online. Also, don't forget Deal of the Week this week, because there's always a new deal every single week. Save 15% off all Zendikar set singles, whether that be Eldrazi, Planeswalkers, Stoneforge Mystic, the Fetchlands. Um, I think there's Psycho... What was there? Psycholands? I can't remember if there's triomes in the Zendikar. They got a lot of lands. It's the land of lands. That's what Zendikar is. They're known for their floating lands around there. And don't, don't forget that when you use coupon code Nikachu, you get a little bit of a bonus by getting an additional 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. Your ability to play any format, any time that you want on Magic Online. They got Commander. They got Standard. You're, are you tired of cracking boosters on Arena to make your decks? Well, now you could just rent whatever you want in the Standard season, and then when it cycles out, whatever, none of your cards cycled out. It was Mana Traders cards. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore Z-U-E for great justice. Okay, back to expensive clunky magic cards. Uh, we have friendly, friendly neighborhood idiot bop into the music. Who wouldn't? Yeah, do use those Nika points. Uh, what do we have from Charlie Dett? Uh, Daragaz. Reincarnated. There's a lot of them here. Okay, we have a seven mana dragon. Oh, I have a dragon sound effect. You just wait for it. Okay, it's a seven seven flying trample haste. If Daragaz reincarnated would die and said exile with three egg counters. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if Daragaz is exiled with an egg counter on it, remove an egg counter from it. Uh, then if Daragas has no egg counters on it, return it to the battlefield. That is so weird. If it would die... Well, okay, so the advantage is if it dies, it's not gone forever. So you... It's a, it basically is a weird suspend. In three more turns, it'll be back. To be honest, not a very exciting card. Flying Trample Haste. That's all it, that's all it has going for it. But it is, it is seven mana for a seven seven creature. Do you feel lucky? With your Daragaz reincarnated. Okay, next super chat we got from Conspiracy Cracker. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got Staff of Nin. This is a six mana pool noodle. You don't say. Oh, I don't. Staff. Uh, sorry, Staff of Nin. Pool noodle. Who doesn't like a good pool noodle? I won't buy one, but I'll play with it if it's at the pool. We have a six mana artifact at the beginning of your upkeep. Draw a card. And then tap Staff of Nin deals one damage to a single target. You choose whatever you want. I mean, this is not that terrible. You know, honestly, six mana to draw a card is basically uh, draw a card every single, every second, sorry, every turn you get an extra card. So you're drawing two. It's a one sided howling mine. And you tap to deal one damage to any target. You kill all the weenies. Corbinix says this isn't too bad in affinity decks. Really? It doesn't have affinity itself. Unless you have a card that says all your artifacts have affinity. Then then we're talking. Yeah, then, the, the, then this card could be broken. You could make it work in the right deck that can transfer counters. There's a few other cards that use egg counters to their benefit. Oh, with the dragon? But still, if you get the, if you get the dragon out again, it's just still a... F okay, I guess if you can tr constantly transfer the eggs, then you would perpetually just have this un uh, effectively an indestructible creature. What are the other permits going to do with the eggs? You're the master of spelling errors? No, I am. If you've watched this show for long enough, you know I misspell everything all the time, all at once. 
Uh, okay. Arethusa with the Sealed Fate. Sealed Fate is a black, blue X. Sorcery, look at the top X cards of, tar of target opponent's library. Remove one of those cards from the game and put the rest back on top of that player's library in any order. Look at the top X cards of target opponent's library. That's it? Oh, but we put them back in any order. I'll admit I would never play this card, honestly. It's never going in any of my decks. It's 10 cents for a reason. It's good to know more about your enemy's fate than your enemy does. Yeah, in, in some cases. So I guess you, I guess if you have like, if X goes deep enough, you'll just peeve them off by stacking a bunch of lands on top of their deck. Not that I would really care. <laughs> One way of winning is to make sure that the opponent doesn't draw anything useful at all. Ha ha ha. Uh, okay, next super chat we got from Dr. Caviar. Thank you very much. We got uh, Takeno's Cavalry. Thank you very much for having a backup just in case. Uh, and this is a four mana, four mana one one, but it's got Bushido one, so it can get buffed up every single time it becomes blocked or blocks. Tap to Keno's Cavalry deals one damage to our attacking or blocking spirit. This card is stone garbage. What a trashy card. Uh, let's, how about Lava Axe? Lava Axe, five mana? Five damage. It's almost like an X damage spell, except you get like the one damage for that single red that you paid over here. Okay, next up, um, oh, let's take a look at Barons with this big super chat. E name as one. I swear this card is, keeps getting mentioned every show that we have. If this has been done already, then donate the chat notes, okay? We haven't done this one today. We've done it a few times this week. The green, green, black, black, eight generic. That's 12 mana. For an 8-8 Spirit, and when it comes into play, if you played it from your hand, which is very unlikely, uh, you may search your library for a Spirit card and also put it into play. When a name as one is put into a graveyard from play, you may remove it from the game. If you do return target Spirit card from your graveyard to play. Um... The ability is honestly, like, really powerful, but I still don't think it even matters. I mean, if there comes a day where maybe you can combo kill with this, like, search your deck for, like, a Spirit... And they can blink the uh, Iname as one. Then you can search your library. I, oh, no. It doesn't, you can't even blink it. Yeah, not worth it. No no combo potential. No care. <laughs> I used to use Lava Axe as uh, topmost flavor. Haven't we all? Back then when there weren't so many burn spells. Back in the day when Shock and Lightning Bolt were some of the top tier cards of the entire game. We were, we were completely... We were really dragging the bottom of the barrel for burn spells back then. Okay, we got uh, Shellen with Alabaster Leech. Alabaster Le Leech? Alabaster Leech for a white. <laughs> it's, just, it's one mana. It's not worth it. Oh, that's... This is great. White spells you play cost white more to play. Yeah, even for one mana, no one would play this card. I'm wondering, you know what, even for one mana, I don't even think one mana, one three is even that strong. It's like pretty pointless. Very, very pathetic card. Okay, Crowcore Games, what do you got for us? We got the Boom Pile. Boom Pile, you say, chance to blow itself up, wow. Four mana, flip a coin. If you win the flip, destroy all non-land permanents. If you win the flip, uh, do you even want to? This is like a very bad Navinral's disc. I mean, the advantage is it could blow everything up on immediately, or it just might not do anything. Navinral's disc will be something like a, it comes, it's like four mana, but comes into the battlefield tap, so it's guaranteed to blow everything up next turn. It's 50 50. You want it now or a little bit later? That's the key. You want it now or later? Uh, okay, next up. Let's take a look. Eric Nolan with the Ember Shot. That's a burn spell of some. Oh, no. Okay, it is a burn spell, but not the one I was thinking of. Seven mana. Deals three damage to target creature or player. But get this. We get to draw a card off of it. All right, anyone interested? Anyone want to buy stock in Ember Shot? 
Imagine playing a burn deck with the most expensive burn spells of all time. Nothing costs less than five. Ember Shot would be pure value, uh, but otherwise it's pure, absolute, unadulterated garbage. <laughs> Dwarves bring poor coal to the market, use good coal in their homes, and throw their best coal away. I don't understand the end of that set of that saying. Um. Okay. Next up, King Ginger. Thank you very much for the super chat. Ultra of Shadows. Takes so long to get online. You don't say. So you're saying you're saying this from personal experience. The seven mana artifact at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase add a black to your mana pool for each charge counter on Ultra Shadows. Pay seven, tap, destroy target creature, and then put a charge counter on Ultra of Shadows. Hold on, what is the point of the charge counters at the beginning? Uh, at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you add a black to your mana pool. For oh, I see. So you get uh, <laughs> we get black on. For a mana pool for each thing that we've destroyed yeah so the, basically it's a seven mana weapon you the mana is probably not gonna matter a whole lot no matter what we got top police with hypnox hypnox is a 11 11 mana 8 8 nightmare horror with flying when Hypnox comes into play, if you played it from your hand, remove all cards and target opponent's hand from the game. So hold on, if I so if I don't cheat it in play, I get to remove all the cards in my opponent's hand, which is probably zero at the point of, at the point I'm playing something for 11 mana. But then when it leaves play, return all the removed cards from t to their owner's hands. It's now I'll, I'll admit. I've played enough Commander games to know that there are some players who refill their hand late in the game. Hey, you never know. Someone top decks like Wheel of Fortune, and all of a sudden Hypnox might be online. But still, at the same time, chances are no one has anything in their hand. They got like two or three cards. It's like a, some sort of weird counter spell that's probably going to counter the Hypnox at that point. So I, I'm not holding my breath on this card. Platonic Liquid, thank you very much for your super chat. I'm determined to get a land on here, Oasis. There are a lot, uh, you know what, maybe, um, <laughs> determined. Let's, okay, let's help Platonic Liquid out. So this one is trash, if I remember correctly. It's prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn. Okay, this definitely works out. There are other lands, though. I don't know if Teferi's Isle is, like, particularly bad. It's a, it's a weird card. You get, like, two mana every other turn. Yeah, maybe this is, like, still a little too good. I'm sure there are some lands out there, like, uh... Oh, Desert. Don't underestimate Desert. Desert can ping Ragabans. Look at that. It add, like Not only does it add mana, it can deal a whole point of damage in combat. Okay, so... Don't be bad-mouthing Desert around here. That is miles ahead, miles away better than the Oasis. You need the Oasis to counteract the Desert, I guess. That was the whole point. I think Desert came from Arabia Nights. We need to balance Desert. It's broken. All right. We'll create Oasis. For some reason, this <laughs> this doesn't add mana for some dumb reason. Still taps for mana, so it's still worth something. Oh, absolutely. Okay. We got Star with a Blessed Wind. So blessed. Nine mana. Target player life total becomes 20. Depending on the format that you're playing, this may not be too bad. Could be an ultimate. Well, okay, is is nine mana worth dealing twenty like twenty damage to somebody? It's also an interesting way to de defeat uh, what's it called? Um, someone with infinite life gain. So you blow up the board to re remove their engine, and it's like, oh, you had a hundred bazillion Google life. Okay, well, blessed win. Now you're at twenty. Sorry, sorry, buddy. Still, I would never play blessed win. That's for sure. Instead of Teferi's Isle, you think you have Seafarer's Quay? Let's look up the... Yeah. Oh, I own one of these because I love the image. All your blue legends gain bands with other legends. Oh, there we go. We found the card worse than... Uh, we found the card worse than Oasis. This is even more worthless. Only my blue legends gains banned with other legends. So I need more legends on the battlefield. That's definitely not worth the mana cost, even though it's free. Okay, next up, we got Topmost Flavor with Draco. Oh, I'm so sorry that we already did that one. 
So we are going to donate your super chat. Donate to um, Bacon Cut Bug. I don't think got a card yet. Aladdin's Ring. Yeah, the eight mana artifact. Pay eight, deal four damage to somebody. If you can afford it. Okay, next up. Let's take a look at. Uh, did Abzo get a card? Spirit of the Night. All right, nine mana. Creepy 6-5 legendary creature with flying trample pro black. Uh, first strike when attacking. Spear of the Night is unaffected by summoning sickness. Would never play it. Not in my deck, in my opinion. Uh, next super chat coming from Restion Serpentine. Uh, I got the card Arena from a book. That's a real card. This isn't... Th oh, it doesn't add for mana. Its ability is interesting, though, because it makes creatures fight, right? Three mana, tap, target creature you control, and target creature of an opponent... Of, uh, oh, sorry, of an opponent's choice? They control each of those creatures, deal damage equal to its power to the other. So if my opponent has a lot of creatures, they could, like... They're basically, like, choosing their champion. So you have to pick a fight with someone who has, like, the crappiest... Like, just only crappy creatures on the board. No choice. Only crappy creatures. Spirit of the Night used to be a big back in the day. Yeah, well, not so big anymore. We have bigger creatures to be worried about. Okay, Von Ragnar says, You want to see a creature worse than Blind Creeper? Check out the Mog Squad. Dead on arrival. Hardly worth the paper. It was printed on, not to mention the mana cost. So it's a 2 mana 3-3. Three, three. Mog Squad gets minus 1, minus 1 for each other creature in play. So, effectively... You need to build a deck with only four Mog Squad and nothing else and hope your opponent plays nothing else too? Is that what we're getting at here? I guess it'd be fine to like a burn deck like that. It's like you play turn two Mog Squad. I think that was the idea, but back then they didn't even have enough burn spells. You like literally need to pair this up with other creatures in order to have any chance of winning the game. Camel? From Nate. Okay, one mana. It's zero one. Bands. All creatures attacking in a band with camel are immune to damage done by desert. See, so you can get around that desert mechanic. This probably is better than it looks. Like, it, it's. And let me tell you, ba like banding, that's broken. It's a broken mechanic. Don't underestimate it. Hope Catzel, I must introduce you to Joven's Tools. A, uh, what's it called? A, a carpenter never blames their tools. The six mana artifact. Pay four. Tap. Target creature cannot be blocked this turn except by walls. <laughs> That's so weird. I guess, like, these are tools that are feared by creatures. Look, I might get you with the screwdriver or something. But the walls fear nothing. Nothing, I say. You'll never get through this wall. Okay, next up, we got... Uh, who hasn't got a card at all yet? I have no idea. Um, probably Toilet Duck got a card already. Bark. Tooth. War Beard. By the way, hold on. Can I also recognize we're spending 10 mana so our creature can't be as unblockable? That's a bit extreme. For 10 mana, you could just wipe the board, everything in front of you. Okay, the Bark Tooth War Beard. So for seven mana, we have a six-five human warrior, and that's it. That's it. That's the end of the resume here. You have anything more? No. Would you? You think you're gonna get the job? You want to get paid that much? Seven mana. You have. You bring nothing to the table. Next, well, we know where to put this resume straight into the garbage. Uh, okay. Next up, we got the big pogger ancestral tribute. Ancestral Tribute, the seven, ma uh, seven mana. You gain two life for each card in your graveyard. Flashback for a million. You know, uh, under certain circumstances, I'd be terrified of this card. Especially if I was a burn player. Okay, Kagan. We've got, uh, I think, Bother on Foss Bother is kind of underwhelming. I didn't even know Bother was even a singular card in this game. Bother! Okay, we got six mana. Create... 
three 1-1 one, one Cutlass Thopter Artifact Creature Tokens with Flying and Surveil 2. Totally agree. Not worth the paper it's printed on. So what was Fuss? Uh, put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. So Fuss and Bother. It wasn't even a very good joke, to be honest. Oh, we've done many... Well, we have done one Leviathan. Called The Leviathan. Hinaria, Yargul. Uh, Glutton of Urborg. Five mana for a 9-3. It's not the worst. It's like... Is it wor Is it that... You know what? Maybe you're right. Like, what's it? We have a uh, Rotting Regisaur, a 7-6 for three mana. This is five mana. It's basically just a crappier version of the thing. Okay, do you know what? I think it passes. If I saw this in draft, I'd be pretty unha unhappy about the thing. Krana says, I didn't get a card yet. You, you sure? Okay, Endless Swarm. And anything with epic. Anything you say? So, eight mana, sorcery. Put a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token into play for each card in your hand. And it's got epic. So, for the rest of the game, you can't play spells. You will only be getting snakes for the rest of the game. And pretty certainly, the moment that you cast this thing for eight mana, you will have no cards in your hand. So, you get, like, one snake. Crocore Games. Uh, Bubble Matrix. It's just jank. Is it jank you can take to the bank? Probably not. Four mana artifact. Old damage dealt to creatures is reduced to zero. Huh? How does this card work? All damage dealt to creatures is reduced to zero. So he can't deal damage to anybody. I think this is an interesting card. So, like, the cre you can just basically freely attack anybody without any worry of, like, getting damaged or losing your creatures. And, like, if you have any sort of triggered abilities upon dealing damage to your opponent or even attack triggers, I think this is pretty good. It's actually an amazing card. A lot of people are just learning about this. Carbonic's like, ooh, I like this. I'm going to put this right in my deck. Burn would love this. Old damage dealt to creatures. I don't know if Burn would love this. That's the problem. All damage dealt to creatures is reduced to zero. But all damage dealt to players is still the same. All damage dealt to players, still maximum. I would pay five. Corbin is like, I'll pay five mana for this. Five mana. Do I hear six? Do I hear six mana? Six mana. Six mana. Do I hear six mana? Six mana over there. Do I hear seven? Seven mana. Yeah, insert matrix joke here. Some people just got red pilled into the bubble matrix. Some people just like, yeah. Oh, they, we got your friendly neighborhood idiot. He'll pay six mana. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, trample poison would love this. Oh, yeah, maybe that's true. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, no, but it still doesn't deal damage. I don't know. You can't, because you would deal damage in poison counters, right? But you can't deal damage, period. Whatevers. Old boy with divine intervention. Eight mana, and there's a battlefield with two intervention can counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove one. And if there are no intervention counters on it, the game is a draw. Of course. Okay, Bacon Catbug. I see your land and raise you a Soros Path, wouldn't you? The card that actually works against you. Yeah, tap, choose two target blocking creatures and opponent controls. If each of those creatures could block all creatures that the other is blocking, remove both of them from combat. Each one then blocks all creatures the other was blocking. Whenever Sora's Path becomes tapped, it deals two damage to you and each creature you control. How to wipe your board? <laughs> How to wipe... How to clean your board yourself. The easy way, Sora's Path. Clean your board at home. A player isn't a creature. I know, all damage dealt to creatures is reduced to zero. I said, like, it, it re, like creatures aren't affected, but the players are. <laughs> Slackwellman is like, this land is bad. You don't say! Is anyone seeing this card for the first time? I'd be very surprised. Okay, we got uh, T. Corellis uh, with Trolls of Tel Jilad. Seven mana, five, six, fatty. No ETB. Its ability seems very less optimal to use 
it ability on multiple multiple creatures per turn let's take a look at it it is seven mana for a five six troll shaman and it can regenerate only the green creatures target green creature hey if you have enough mana and the game was slow enough i guess this is fine but if you even cheat this in play it's completely worthless uh we have done leviathan you are correct Wes, that plays ma music celestial prism Three mana artifact. Pay two tap. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Play this ability as an interrupt. Super trash. Very suspicious card, actually. Or were you spending five ma You basically spent five mana to get one mana. That is not... That is not a good deal, in my opinion. That is the opposite of compound interest. That's inflation right there. Power Cutie says, can I request Shinnin? Yeah, absolutely, you can request a Shinnin of Fear's Chill. Five mana for a three, two spirit. It can't block. Well, not all of us can. Channel, discard Shinnin of Fear's Chill. Target creature can't block this turn. Oh, these channel creatures existed a long time ago. And then they created the channel lands in Neon Dynasty. Oh, I didn't know that was like a mechanic that they brought back. Interesting. Baron Brendan, thank you very much for the super chat. Mu Yan Ling. Uh, I wanted a mid draw to. I'll take divination over that. Also, I'm curious, does chat prefer tea or coffee? I am. I got both. I drink tea and coffee at the beginning of every single day. I my preferences for coffee, but I can't drink coffee all day, or I'm gonna have insomnia like crazy. All right, we have a six mana, five loyalty Yan Ling. Plus two, target creature can't block this turn. Minus three, draw two cards. And also minus ten, tap all creatures your opponents control. You take an extra turn after this one. For the low, low price of plusing two for three turns and going minus ten, the next one. Roland is mostly a mo coffee guy, a co coffee person. We got a uh, friendly neighborhood idiot, also loves tea. Free coffee, does that work? Yeah, you know what, you sound like my brother. Oh, is it free? Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, I'm a huge coffee fan. Oh, is it free? Okay, yeah, I'm a huge tea fan. Whatever is free. Oh, there's some free juice over here. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a juice fan. <laughs> oh, the coffee just showed up. Stranger Candy with Urza's Blueprints. Six mana artifact with Echo. Oh, if the Echo would just kill you. Tap, draw a card. Oh, God. So with 12 mana to draw, what, two cards? Yeah, so you, you do get uh, at least get to draw a card out of this. Don't, aren't there, like, strictly better cards on this? Isn't there, like, a four-mana tomb or something like that where it, uh, I, I think you draw a card every single... I, I swear, there's a four-mana tomb. Maybe it's five mana. It's played in, like, 93, 94, where at, at your upkeep, you just draw a card. I can't remember if it was four or five mana. Maybe it was six. But this one, you have to pay, an, you have to pay 12 mana to keep this thing around. You keep missing Jess, Nikachu. Uh, he was already here. Oh, uh, I haven't got a card today. Autocron Worm. Jess actually being the second person to ever join the chat of this channel. Right behind Toads, number one. Autocron Worm! 15 mana! What are we gonna get? What do we get for 15 mana? Well, we can convoke it in play if we have enough creatures. And it's a 914 trampler. When I, my greatest question for Wizards of the Coast is how did they come to like 914? Why not 913 or 915 or even 1014? Should have made it 711. All right, next up, we've got uh, Crow Core Games with the Super Chat. Uh, all creatures, it includes opponents, creatures as well. LOL, it's jank. Can we do Brass Talon Chimera? The four mana two two first striker counts as oh, sorry chimera. All right, I got I've been getting crap from all of you for years that I've been pronouncing chimera wrong. All right, chimera. I think it's chimera. It's a two. It's a two two first striker. It counts as a chimera. We sacrifice our brass talon, chimera. Put a plus two plus two counter on, on target, chimera. And that Chimera gains first strike permanently. They're saying Chimera a lot in this card. 
Kamira, 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 Kamira. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, six. Just for that, it's terrible. It's Kamara, Chimera. I'm just gonna have to trust you guys. Um, Fiel with Biorhythm. Oh, what does this card do? It's like an old card. An English one. Biorhythm. Sick eight mana sorcery. Each player's life total becomes the number of creatures they control. Hold on, isn't this like banned in commander? Isn't it broken? Why is this card broken? It literally is it's eight mana. This is banned in commander. Yeah, but for what reason? Who on earth put this on the ban list? For what reason? Did someone lose to the, like, did one of the RC members lose to this one day and it's like, I'm never dealing with this card again. It's banned. How hard, how easy is it to cast? Does it danger? This is legal and modern. No one plays this card. It's completely pointless. Each player's life total becomes the number of creatures they control. I should play this, I should play this in Simic Merfolk. I should try to ramp this thing out. It should be in, like, Titan decks in some decks. Like, Versus some control decks, they would just die to this immediately. Board wipe into this, but then you die too. Insta kills people who have no creatures. Well, that's their problem, isn't it? Cyclonic rift into bio. Oh, ooh, that's a combo. That's a bad combo that might actually work. Okay, whatever. I guess Biorhythm is disqualified. Kagan, a shattered seraph. Um, doesn't seem worth casting. It's exile ability is worth it though, I think. Is this a real this is this a real card or is this an alchemy card? I think this is a fake card. So we have a seven mana four five with flying. How can an alchemy card be unplayable? They're built to be broken. Enter the battlefield, you gain an entire three life. Uh, pay one exile the shattered seraph from your hand, target land gains tap, add uh Asper colors. Until Shattered Seraph is cast from exile. You may cast Shattered Seraph for as long as it remains exiled. What? So I exile it from my hand, and then until Shattered Seraph is cast from exile, I may cast. You may cast Shattered Seraph for as long as it remains exiled. Should have just said you may cast. It should have just said you may cast Shattered Seraph for as long as it remains exiled. Oh no! Hold on. Target land gains. Oh, I get it. For as long as it's exiled. A land can produce Asper colors, but then when I cast it from exile, it loses that ability. That is so weird. I don't think they mean the alchemy version. I don't see another version. Shattered. Is there another? Oh, there is another. There is another version. Okay, let's see what the the real version is. The last one was bad too. Okay, it has flying. Enters the battlefield. You still gain life. In this case, three life. Uh, pay two, exile it from your hand. Target land still gains Esper colors for as long as uh, the Seraph has remained exiled. You can cast it for as long as it remains exiled. Didn't really change that much. Did, did they just, did they power it down? No, it's the same thing. I think it's the same thing. Corporate needs to find, it needs you to find the difference between these two cards. They're the same card. They're just the same exact card. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that was a lot of fun. I love looking up worthless cards. In fact, some of, we found out some of those cards are actually pretty good. Creatures will not deal any damage. Uh, will deal damage equal to zero to other creatures. All right, weekdays, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. That's when you can find this show. Be there or be square. Thanks to everyone who supports the channel in their way, whether you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show. Oh, it's Platonic Liquid. Hold on. Platonic Liquid wants to squeeze something in at the last second over here. I'm a day late, but let me defend Sorrow's Path. It triggers on tap. Not activation. So Videlkin Plotter plus Candelabra and combos with Cacophon... Caca... Fudon plus other enrage cards also donate to chat. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna donate one while well, the that we got our like theme song going on over here. You heard the lady. One more. Let's see. Uh, I gotta probably go dig in the 
dig deep in the past. Magus of the Mirror? What is that? Of the Mirror. Magus of the Mirror. Six mana for a 4-2 human wizard. Tap, sacrifice, Magus of the Mirror. Exchange life totals with target opponent. Exchange, activate this ability only during your upkeep. So they'll, like, completely see it coming. <laughs> I'm sorry it takes, like, two minutes to go through. <laughs> no problem. No problem. All right. And with that, who else do I have to thank? We, we got to thank, thank people like Platonic Liquid. Sorry. Platonic Liquid for not only donating Super Chats, but also donating for other people to be part of the show. I know we have to thank the Coffee Crew for being here this morning. We got King Ginger, Corbinic, Protopon. We got Toilet Duck, your friendly neighborhood idiot. Bacon Catbug, Amazing Crack Monkey. Toad, Someone to Foresee. Jess Ryan, Mr. Deadhead. Crocor Games. Uh, Kagan. We got Kagan over here. Who else do we have? Oh, we got a bunch of people. Because you guys are the coffee crew. So as usual, my crew, keep brewing up them coffees. And we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you at the next cup.